Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with GenSense. Hope that you're doing really well. Today, I've got another video that's powered by you. Yeah, another subscriber choice type video. Oh boy. So a little bit ago, I asked you guys on the community tab of my YouTube channel, what is a fragrance that you personally have a backup bottle of or you need to get one of? And you guys answered. And today, I'm gonna be going over with you guys 10 of the top answers that you provided based off of uh, just upvotes. It, it's not scientific at all. And right now I have another uh, community post. You can go on there and answer it and then your answers will be in a future video as well. So if you wanna take part in that, go over to the community tab at some point. So let's go ahead and jump into it guys. Let's check out these fragrances that you think are so awesome or you're so paranoid that it's going away. You need to have a backup bottle. And as we work through these, I'll, I'll pop a comment down below from one of you guys for each one of these fragrances that was chosen. So maybe you'll be in this video, uh, a random guy, or 10 of you will. Now, first off, before we jump into a fragrance, I want to single out Rich Mitch, who left this comment right here. So that's very useful, <laughs> Rich Mitch. Uh, over 100 backup bottles. Could have given me at least one, but uh, I just wanted to single that out because, just because. Shout out to you. Okay, where to get started? Wow, let's get started with this one. This is this is solid. Dior Ohm. Now this is Dior Ohm Original. Uh, it, it actually is just Dior Ohm Original, but Dior Ohm, the Eau de Toilette, Dior Ohm Intense, Dior Ohm Parfum. These fragrances were selected over and over and over again. And I don't disagree with you at all. Dior Ohm, any of them? Legitimately any of them? Yeah, yeah, give me a backup bottle, man. So this makes sense across a multitude of reasons. First off, Dior Ohm, Dior Ohm Intense, Dior Ohm Parfum, they're all awesome. I love them. The iris in those fragrances is outstanding. Some of the best designer scents ever, period. Hard stop, they're awesome. And when the day comes that the stock dries up on those fragrances, they're discontinued, they're dead and gone, you know for a fact that the price on those is going to skyrocket on eBay and other sites like that. And the other reason it makes sense is because I don't trust Christian Dior. Now, Dior Home 2020, I got over it. I got over it, I embraced it, but that doesn't change the fact that Christian Dior has shown they don't care, man. They'll kill off the Dior Homme line and they will reinvent it any way that they want. So if you want those Iris Dior Homme fragrances, maybe you, you do want to scoop up a backup bottle. So those ones, they got a lot of votes, all three. So I just have Dior Homme right here in this video, uh, but all three. Next up, another one from Dior, uh, Dior Sauvage Elixir. I was kind of surprised to see this one. One of the reasons that popped up the most often uh, for people that were picking Dior Sauvage Elixir was that they did not want it to be reformulated. So there's a, a good amount of people out there apparently who love this fragrance, love the performance of it, and they're worried that at some point it's gonna be tweaked, changed, and it's just not gonna be the same. It's not gonna be like it used to be. Dior Sauvage Elixir is a fragrance that I like very, very much kind of tugs on my heartstrings a little bit. It throws it back to the uh, 80s style of men's fragrances, but with a modern touch. Doesn't really smell all that much like a Dior Sauvage. So it came completely out of left field for me. I was expecting it to be like an evolution of Dior Sauvage Parfum, you know, just taking a little step further, but it's its own thing. Dior Sauvage EDT, EDP, Parfum, those, didn't really get mentioned at all. Elixir mentioned a bunch. And guys, I'm gonna hit you with those codes. Once again, Gents10, Twisted Lily, save yourself 10% off the whole site. Gents8, jomashop.com, save yourself $8 off any order over 110. Next up, one that was a bit of a surprise, Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled Oud. The more I thought about it, the more it made sense though. Hugo Boss is one of those companies that just pumps out flankers. You just see a new Boss Bottled all the time, just constantly coming out. And so you could see this one eventually just kind of shuffling off and then not being available at discounters anymore. And it's that type of fragrance 
I'd like to see the price going up a little bit, becoming more difficult to find. And for what it's worth, I think Boss Bottled Oud is one of the nicer designer Oud fragrances that's been released. It has that Boss Bottled DNA front and center. So if you like Boss Bottled, you're gonna be able to pick it out from this fragrance very easily. It's not one of those Oud fragrances that's completely different from the original. The quality is good as well, and the price is not bad from discounters. So if you really love the fragrance, it makes sense to scoop one up. Have it for a rainy day. And then uh, another one that was a big surprise, I wanna bring this up. It is Toy Boy from Moschino. Good old Toy Boy. You don't really hear as much about this one anymore. It came out, everybody was talking about it, and then just kind of went on its way. It makes sense though that everybody would talk about this fragrance. Moschino doesn't have all that many fragrances for men. This one comes out and uh, with the advertising and the fragrance and the presentation and everything, you knew that people were gonna be talking about it. It's a very interesting fragrance compared to uh, pretty much literally any men's designer fragrance on the market. It does its own thing completely and entirely and I respect the heck out of it for that. It is definitely a fragrance though that's love it or hate it. Uh, potentially divisive for guys out there. A lot of men are, are just not gonna be comfortable wearing it. The, the floral feel of the fragrance is too much for some guys. Then we've got Chanel Platinum Ego East, which I saw pop up a number of times. Really interesting. You would have thought Bleu de Chanel or one of the Allures, but Platinum Ego East popped up more than the others. Surprise. This one would be a bummer to see go away. It's very classy, very easy to pull off. Makes you smell like a million bucks. It's just not the first fragrance I'd think of from Chanel, so a nice little surprise. Actually, a bunch of surprises here from you guys. Uh, some of the ones coming up are as obvious as you could possibly get, but these last three, I was really happy to see. And also a really nice story uh, from the guy whose comment I showed you for Platinum Ego East. I think anytime you have a fragrance that you associate with just fantastic memories to the point that you smell the scent and it, it triggers something in your brain and, and makes you feel those those uh, those feelings and remember those thoughts vividly once again. Any fragrance like that, it's, it's worth snagging a backup bottle even if you think the fragrance is safe because it's almost like you're safeguarding your, your own memories in a, a weird kind of way. All right, next one is Mustache Eau de Parfum. So this one smells similar to Yves Saint Laurent's Tuxedo. It's like a more affordable take on that scent profile, on that scent DNA. And this fits the mold for that type of fragrance that ends up jettisoning through the ceiling into the stars when it actually goes away. Because it's that type of fragrance that so many people in the fragrance world love who have talked about it and who have hyped it and who have bought it and worn it. It's really like our circle, <laughs> like your normal guy is not probably going to a Macy's or something looking for this, right? They're looking for Sauvage or Bleu de Chanel typically or Carolina Herrera bad boy. Are you a bad boy? Did wear the lightning bolt fragrance. Compliments. So I just went off on a tangent there, but those fragrances, the types uh, where it has a hardcore niche audience, those fragrances are typically the ones that really, that really get up there. And that one is a very good quality scent. Warm, spicy, sexy, so well done. And after that, we have why. What a part fun. I wouldn't think this one is in any any danger of being uh, discontinued, but is it possibly in danger of being reformulated? Uh, maybe. And so I could see that maybe kind of like with your Sauvage Elixir, you know, a lot of people uh, maybe want it the way they remember it. And that makes sense. If you love a fragrance and you love just everything about it, how it smells, how it works off your skin, you know, you know it like the back of your hand. You spray it on exactly this many times, you wear it and it works perfectly. A scent like that, you want it to be the way you always remembered. So yeah, maybe you scoop up some backup bottles, heck with it. If you got the money and it makes you happy, do what makes you happy. So if you want some extra bottles of that, just because you wanna be absolutely certain that you're you're good until the apocalypse, you do you. After that one, Paco Rabanne's One Million Lucky. And this makes sense. It popped up a bunch of times and it makes sense because A, it's actually pretty good and unique. And then B, uh, discontinuation. Anytime a discontinuation happens or anytime there's a lot of smoke around a discontinuation uh, rumor, then people are gonna be scooping those bottles up. 
because oftentimes uh, a fragrance, you may not realize it's truly discontinued until it's too late. That's why you wanna go to your doctor and get checked for prostate cancer. Uh, once you realize that you have it, it's too late. And so discontinuations are like that, only uh, completely not like that because it's not really all that serious. But oftentimes, by the time the vast majority of people have realized that, oh, the discontinuation is for real, it's it's gone. It's it's out of here. So the one million lucky discontinuation thing is a bummer because I like the fragrance a lot. I like it even more now than when it first came out. It's this interesting meeting of worlds. So it has fresh aspects to the fragrance, but then you have these warmer, more gourmandy aspects to the fragrance and it all comes together works together perfectly. And in keeping with uh, tradition from Paco Rabanne, they discontinue the one millions that I like. So yeah, it's not good. Sorry, one million lucky, see you later. <laughs> one million purvey, oh, this is my favorite, bring it back. A lot of people though saying they're gonna get that in a 200 milliliter monstrous size. One million lucky, bummer. After that, the one, Eau de Parfum, Dolce & Gabbana. Saw this a bunch of times on there. A lot of love for the one Eau de Parfum. And uh, truthfully, I've not thought about getting a backup bottle of this fragrance myself, but maybe it wouldn't hurt. I do think that the scent itself is one of the best smelling designer fragrances ever made. Oh man, it's just so good. I loved the Eau de Toilette, big time. And the Eau de Parfum came out and I was like, yes, please, I'll take it. So this is all me, even with all the fragrances that I have, I mean, I've knocked out like half the bottle of this thing. Wife loves it, perfect date night fragrance, perfect evening fragrance. It has uh, tobacco in here, amber, spices, Performance maybe could be a little better, but I don't care at all. I think actually the performance of the fragrance perfectly suits the scent itself. I've never thought about getting a backup bottle myself because I feel like it's pretty safe. I feel like it should not be <laughs> discontinued. You know, like why Eau de Parfum? You, you think it should be safe. But if you love the fragrance, the backup bottle is not gonna hurt anybody, especially if you're gonna wear it, so yeah. Some other quick honorable mentions here. Uh, some of these actually got mentioned more than the fragrances that I have featured already, but they always get featured in these videos. So I didn't wanna just keep featuring them. Prada Loam, though it does make a lot of sense. So I'm not faulting any of you out there. Just like I talked about earlier, not trusting Dior with the uh, Ohm line. I don't really trust Prada with the Loam line. And then Aqua de Jo Profumo. A lot of you guys talked about Aqua de Jo Profumo. I get it, I get it, Profumo just, so popular, such a huge release. So of course people are gonna wanna back up with that. The other two, Lana Weed Alone Blue Electric. This one got mentioned a ton. And some of you guys said that you had bought backup bottles uh, to sell them. So I see you scalpers at the same time. Uh, Lana Weed Alone Blue Electric, Yves Saint Laurent. Do you wanna maybe bring that back in the US? That'd be cool. And then the Loam Ideal line, a lot of different fragrances in the line got mentioned. So this is just the Eau de Toilette. Some people said, uh, the Cologne, some people said Extreme, some people said the Eau de Parfum. So a lot of uh, Lome Ideal mentions. Last fragrance, Aventus. This one makes all the sense in the world when you think about the batch variation talk. In case you're unaware, kind of a big fragrance. Maybe, maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you've heard of Creed. And I'm not talking about the rock band. With arms wide open. I was, is it just me or did I just sound exactly like Scott Stapp, lead singer of Creed? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah, anyway, uh, Aventus, uh, the flagship fragrance for the house of Creed. Uh, in case you haven't heard of Aventus all that much, it has this cool little thing, this little quirk. Uh, it's called batch variations. So what that means in a very dumbed down way here, just to keep things concise, is depending on the batch of your bottle of Aventus, it will smell a little bit differently. Maybe it'll have more pineapple, smell fruitier. Maybe it'll have more birch, smell smokier. What this has led to um, Creed would say inadvertently, but uh, I'm not so sure, is it's led to a lot of people that will collect Aventus like they are Funko Pops or Pez dispensers or something. They'll have like 50, 60, 70 batches of Aventus. 
and they'll have like a whole spreadsheet made out. And if this is your thing, more power to you. I'm not taking shots, but they'll have a whole spreadsheet made out with like all the different batch codes and then like what each one has differently than the others. This one has a approximately a 3% more of a pineapple opening. So when you tell me you want Aventus backups, I say, yeah, that makes sense because every backup bottle that you get of Aventus may smell slightly different than the other one. And there are also, I should say, a lot of people out there that say, no, Aventus is Aventus. It all smells the same. Uh, but we are not getting into that because that's like World War III material. So there we go, guys. 10 fragrances that you said you need a backup bottle of. A lot of solid scents. Some of these I saw coming from a mile away. Other ones surprised me. So good job. I'm proud of you guys. Like always, you do such a good job. Thank you all for hanging with me here today. Uh, stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. See you.